All right, so we're going to work on random variables and the algebra with it. We'll work on it with our calculator. We'll do some in, some intuitive stuff. Um, just get a sense of how this algebra works because it's different than regular algebra in some ways. So first of all, we're gonna I'm going to consider this dice game. You get zero points for rolling a one, two, or a three, five for a four or five, or fifty points for a six. So we're going to show the probability distribution table. And when I show the probability distribution table, uh, I know that I have x, and x, my possibilities for x, I can get 0, I can get 5, and I can get 50. Okay, my outcome are not my rolls, the rolls are what, my outcome are the points I can get. And I know the rolls is, gives me my probability, so I can get 0 points half the time, 5 points 2 out of 6, or 1 third, and 50 points, 1 out of 6. So here's my probability distribution table. If I want to find the expected value in the standard deviation, well, we need to then go to do the calculation. In our formula booklet, <coughs> we can see there's lots of different formulas for different, but all called the same thing, and you have to pick the right one. So this is for a discrete random variable. And so what it says is I'm going to add the product of x times its probability. So if I'm going to go and find uh, my expected value of x, it's going to be 0 times a half plus 5 times a third plus 50 times a sixth. And when I do that calculation, I end up getting 10. And so what this means is that on any, ex any roll, I can expect to get 10 points. <clears throat> and now, there is no 10 as an outcome, but that's okay. It just gives us a sense of how our game is. I can also do standard deviation. And if I look at the formula for my formula, I don't have standard deviation, but what I do have is variance. And so what I do for variance is I take my x value squared times the probability subtract mu squared. Okay? Of these two, this formula is used like 95% of the time, like this idea here, as opposed to this one. So if I take my formula, if I'm going to find the variance, well, the variance of x is going to be, I take this value squared, so it's 0 squared, this whole thing, the sum of 0 squared times a half, plus 5 squared times a third, plus 50 squared times 1 sixth. All of that subtract 10 squared. And when I do this calculation, I end up getting 18.0. And so the variance, oh, well, that's variance. If I want to then find the standard deviation, oh, this is the standard deviation. And I, I square root this value, and I get the... Uh, standard deviation. Okay, so actually if I do this 18.0 squared, this is the variance. Alright, so I can do this in my calculator and it's really handy. Our calculator for the option we always get the calculator. So you need to know how to use it. And so to use my calculator I'm going to go to stat and I'm going to go edit and in L1 I put the numbers, my outcomes, and in L2 I put the probability, as you can see I've already done it. And then I go to statistics, I'm going to calculate one variable statistics, and I want L1, so second number one, to be my list, and my frequency is the probability. And then I calculate my variable. So here is my expected value of 10, and this is my standard deviation. If I wanted to actually find my variance, what I can do, here's a neat little calculator trick, if I go to my variables, go to my statistic variables, here's my standard deviation, and I square it, this will be my variance. So my variance actually equals 325, and so this is my standard deviation here, is my standard deviation is 18.0. All right, super. Imagine doubling the points 
and then adding 15 points to each rule. Okay, here's our game. Let's remember our game. Okay, so I'm going to double each of these points and then add 15 to them. And in doing so, I want to predict what the expected value is and the standard deviation. I want you to take a moment, pause this video, and then actually see what you think you're going to do. So pause it. Okay, now you're back. So if I'm going to actually do this ex little experiment here, okay, I'm in essence going to take every x value multiplied by 2 and then add 15. So this 0, 2 times 0, 0 t plus 15 will become a point total of 15. This point total will be 2 times 5 is 10 plus 15 is 25. 2 times 50 is 100 plus so. Here are my actual, my new outputs, my new possible values. They have the corresponding probabilities. And so if I predict what's going to happen, this multiplies all my values and then this shifts it. So if I check these values with my calculator, I'm going to change L1 to 15, 25, and 115, and then do my calculations all over again. And here's what I get. I get that. And so my expected value is 35. Well, if I take 10, multiply it by 2 and add 15, I get 35. So expected value seems to take on the characteristics of the transformation. It doubles and adds 15 because it's moving the value around. However, if I look at the standard deviation, the standard deviation is 36. That's only double the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the spread, how spread out the numbers are. Well, multiplying by 2 will spread out numbers. Adding 15 shifts everything in the common direction, so it does not change the spread. It keeps it the same. So when I do standard deviation, I only double it. I do not it's not affected by a linear addition. So that's important. And so intuitively, what I can do here is if I consider this, I know the expected value of a plus bx is simply going to be, maybe I'll do it big here. I'll do it big. The expected value is simply going to be a plus b times the expected value of x. I just do the linear calculations to expected value of x. And two, that's true. When I have variance, though, this a vanishes. It does not change the spread of the values. And so it ends up just being b variance of x. So now, just note, though, I've not proved this. I've just intuitively, we've deduced it from this one here example. The next video, I'll prove it.